runners know they need to do more stretching if they want to continue to hit the streets. However, those typical stretches we all have done, you know the type, the toe touch, the quad stretch, and the calf stretch, are simply not cutting it anymore. It's time to start doing things more efficiently. Today, I'm going to show you my top three stretches to ensure you're always ready for your next run. What's up guys, Matt Pippen here, and I've been a strength and mobility coach for over 15 years, helping over a thousand professional, collegiate, and everyday athletes move, feel, and perform at their highest level. For all you runners, the two most important joints are the hips and the ankles. If either of these are not working optimally, pain and injury are eventually going to make an appearance, and not just in those areas, but also the knees. Now, the beauty of these moves is that you can do these every single day. No equipment is needed, so there's no excuses. We're first going to attack those hips with an exercise called sideline hip carves. And they're the best thing you can possibly do for your hips. They take your hip through all of the ranges of motion they're capable of, simultaneously stretching and strengthening them. Win-win. Now to begin, we're going to lay on our side and we're going to do three reps each direction for both legs. Now, as you get better with these, feel free to increase your reps to five and eventually ten. So I'm going to start out by doing my right leg, so I'm going to lay on my left side. Now the key here is you just want to make sure your head's supported, so you can either go here, if you got a yoga block or something, you can always put it there as a pillow, and then I want to stack my hips on top of each other. So right now, my right hip is completely on top of my left, my right shoulder is also on top of my left shoulder, because I don't want a whole lot of movement here. So whenever we're doing this exercise, my goal is I want to focus solely on my hip, and nothing else. So I don't want anything else to move. Like imagine the rest of your body is like a granite statue. It's just the hip that's moving. You're going to take your right hand and you're going to put it right on your butt cheek. And he's going to kind of give you some feedback so you're not rolling backwards. Because you're going to a little bit, but we will eventually want to try and completely remove that rolling action. So hand on the butt. We're going to go three reps. We're going to alternate directions. So knee toward your chest and hold. You're going to open the door. So I'm just lifting my knee straight up. When I can't get any higher without rolling backward, look at my foot. I'm going to try to rotate my foot up toward my head. This is called internal rotation of the hip, and this is the biggest part of this exercise. A lot of us don't really have this very well. And you're going to feel this pocket here just light up. You get that feeling, that means you know you're doing something good. From here, I'm going to reach back, and then my can't get any more, my knee's going to come straight down. I'm going to pull through the zone, and that's halfway. Now we're going to reverse it. You're going to push your foot straight back. You're going to feel your butt cheek and your hamstring kind of talking to you. Make sure you're keeping that knee at 90 degrees. You're going to rotate the foot up, and then I'm going to try to lift my leg with my foot higher than my knee. It's going to get real sticky through here. I'm going to let it roll through and hold, and then I'm going to close the door. That's one rep. We're going to go two more. Open the door. Keep that knee at 90 degrees. Rotate, reach back, down, and smooth. Notice how slow I'm going with this, guys. It's all about going slow. Reverse, foot up first, lift, super sticky through there, and close. Let's go one more. Knee towards the chest, open, rotate, back, 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 down, pull through. Reverse, hold, Foot up first, lift the whole leg, and close. All right, guys, that was three reps. Now I'm going to switch to the other side. So now I'm laying on my right, and I got my left hip on top. So once again, stack the hips, stack the shoulders, make sure your head's nice and supported. Take your left hand, put it right directly on your left butt cheek. Same exact movement, three reps. Knee to chest, open the door. Rotate the foot, reach back, see if I'm trying to keep that foot higher than my knee. That's an internal rotation I was talking about. Reverse it, foot up, hold, and close. Two more, up, rotate, swoop, pull through, reverse, up, hold, and down. One more, guys. Here we go. Up, rotate, swoop, back and down. Now, the first
first time you guys do this, it is not going to go smoothly. You're probably going to feel your legs shaking uncontrollably. And that just means you guys don't have control in that new area. How do you get control in that new area? You just keep attacking it over and over and over again. Now next up, we're going to continue stretching those hips with a movement that gets that sticky feeling in your hips to go away. Now I call these 90-90 to bear pose transfers. So to begin, we're going to start out in the 90-90 position. So the 90-90 position, you've probably seen this before, and it's one of the most butchered things on the planet. But the key is, is we want to go super, super slow and make sure we're feeling comfortable here. We're not feeling any kind of pinching or discomfort. It's going to be strenuous, but there's a difference between pain and just kind of being, you know, slightly uncomfortable. From here, I'm going to have my right leg directly out in front of me with my right knee bent, my left ankle bent to 90 degrees. So this nice, clean angle. From here, my left leg is going to be here, parallel to my lower right leg, and then I'm going to have my shin in this nice, pretty line. Now this is 90-90. If this is way too uncomfortable, you just simply lean further away from your trail leg. If you're really, really mobile, you're going to be super, super vertical here. If you're not, you're just going to lean farther away from where your feet and your knees are. There's nothing wrong with that, just make sure you can accomplish the task. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to transfer from this 99 to the other one via the bare bones. So first, you're going to get out over your front right leg. You should just feel like a nice butt stretch here. I'm going to pivot on my left big toe. We're going to go super slow with this, so just watch. The knee's going to come up. I'm keeping my right knee down. Like, see how far I can get my left knee off the ground without my right knee coming up. I move pretty well here, so your knee's probably going to want to come up instantly. Just do the best you can. And the mindset is, imagine your knees are allergic to each other. Don't let them get close. That's the hardest part about this, because that makes it easier if you let your knees come together. Now, once I can't get any more here, I take my left hand up and over. I support myself to now posture up. I don't want to be here. I want to be nice and tall, chest up. And I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more of that left knee. That's about my end range. Now I let my right knee come up a little so I can go get more of my left. Remember, they're allergic to each other. Give a little with the right, go get more of the left. You might have to shimmy your hands a little bit to get comfortable. And now my mindset is to get my left knee down, keeping him as wide as I can, feel good stickiness through here, and then I simply pivot on the heel, now, like magic, I arrive in my other 90-90 position. Now from here, I'm going to simply just reverse it. So I'm going to stay over my left, get on my big toe, come up, feel the good stickiness through here. I can't get any more, so I start to lean back. That allows me a little bit more of my right. Now I bring my hand up and over. Just go super slow here. We have a tendency to want to fly through this. Slower is better. I can't get any more, so now I let my left knee come up. Notice how my right knee goes more, more. They're allergic to each other. I get my right knee down, bring the left hand over, and I finish. All right, guys, that's one rep. So now we're going to go two more. Here we go. Stay over your right. Pick that knee up. Feel all that good stuff, good activation, good stretch. Left hand over, super slow. Look at that posture, because you're going to want to dump into here. Stick your butt out, stick your chest out. Keep that left knee down, right knee comes through. And then once you get here, you might have to just clean it up a little bit. That happens sometimes our legs get here. Just reestablish your good 90-90 position. Make sure everything's nice and parallel. Now we go back. Boom. So whenever my hips feel super sticky, this plus those hip cars goes like that. All that stickiness goes away. Boom. One more, guys. Here we go. Knee up. Rotate, nice and smooth, good posture, good posture, touch down. You can always just spend time here. If this feels really good stretching your butt out, hey, stay here for a little bit. It's your body, you gotta do what's good for you. I'm making my way back, and nice and smooth. <clears throat> and we finish. So that's our 99s of bare post transfers. So guys, be consistent with these first two exercises and your hips are going to feel like butter. Now next up, we're gonna work on those ankles. Now I know it's common to do like a calf stretch to loosen up your ankles, and there's nothing wrong with it. However, we need to stretch our ankles in all of the movements they're capable of. And when you're out there running, your foot is constantly landing in different patterns. It sometimes lands like this, sometimes it lands like that, and if you're lucky, it actually lands flat. 
So we have to prepare our ankles to be able to handle all of this. I call this exercise locked leg ankle cars. To begin, we're going to sit on our butt like I am. I'm going to place my left foot directly underneath my right calf. Now, the hardest part about this is I don't want my knee to roll side to side. Because otherwise, that's hip stuff. We just worked on those, so I want to make sure he doesn't move. So the first couple times you do this, I would just take your hands and grab just above your kneecap, and I don't want my kneecap to roll. No hip stuff, we don't want him to move. I want everything to happen in my ankle. So from here, I'm gonna simply push my foot down. So it's like I'm uh, pushing down the gas pedal. I wanna keep that sensation, and I wanna keep this ankle angle the same throughout this next drill. From here, I'm gonna simply point my foot toward the inside. Now you might be getting an arch cramp, especially if you've never done this before. It's okay, it's totally normal. Shake it out, come back to us. And then I'm gonna simply go out to the outside. That is not gonna go very far, especially if you're here, roll your ankles, it doesn't move that well going out to the outside. But we need to teach it how to. Then I'm gonna go back in. And I'm just gonna do three reps at this position. Back out, back in, back out. The biggest thing you have to think about is just don't let your foot come up. It's going to because your foot doesn't want to be down there. Make it stay down there, go side to side. So we did three reps. Now I'm going to come up so my foot's almost straight up and down, but not quite. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to roll my foot inward. Notice it's like a different action. So instead of like a windshield wiper, now it's kind of like a revolving door. Come out to the side. So it's like I'm trying to point the bottom of my foot to my right. Now we're going to do that two more times. Back in, and back out, one more. Back in, and back out. Now, pull your big toe as close to your shin as possible. So you start to feel maybe a minor stretch in your calf, you're gonna feel a lot of stuff in the front of the shin. Same thing here, back out. Now some of these you're gonna have a little bit of movement, some of these you're not gonna have any movement at all, and it's totally normal. Everyone's a little bit different. You're just gonna do three reps here again. Good, and relax. So we hit three different spots with three reps side to side. Now we're gonna do the full actual motion. From here, I'm gonna push down the gas pedal, make my way in, stay in on the way up. When I can't get any more on the way up, I make my way out and I push down on the way out. We're gonna continue that same direction for two more. Make my way in and up, out and down. You might not be able to hear all the snap, crackle, and popping in my ankle, but I definitely can. It's totally normal. It's like a rusty door hinge. If you haven't moved a door hinge in a while, it gets a little rusty, and all of a sudden it makes creepy noises. You move it more, it gets a little bit better. Now we're going to reverse out to the side, up, in, down, out, up, in, down, one more, out, up, in, and down. And that's it for that sequence. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other ankle. So now my right foot's going to be under my left calf, grab right below uh, above your kneecap. Same thing, we're going to push down, make my way in, make my way out. Now you can probably notice my left ankle moves way better than my right. You're probably going to have the same thing. Ankles are, I mean, nobody's body is completely symmetrical side to side. We just deal with what we got and try to make it better. Let's come up a little bit. Three reps again, inside and outside. See, this is like that revolving door. It's not a windshield wiper like the first one is. Good. And come all the way up. Now it's like I'm trying to pull my toe to my uh, kneecap, make my way in, make my way out. And I'm just simply preparing my ankles for everything that can be thrown their way. If you don't train your ankles to do this stuff, then when you hit kind of an uneven patch out there when you're running, you're gonna blow your ankle out. It's gonna be a nasty spray, and that means you're not gonna be able to run for a while. Let's push down, in, up, out, and down. Two more this way, in and up, out and down, in and up, out and down. Reverse, out and up, in and down. Out and up, in and down, out and up, last rep. In and down. And that's the end of the ankle series. So just like with strength training and cardiovascular training, we have to continue to progress with our stretching. For the sideline hip cars, stick with three reps each direction, each leg for a few weeks. 
And once you feel like you've gotten the hang of it, start trying to increase your rate just a little bit more and increase your reps to five reps. Now for the 99 to bare pose transitions, start out with three reps each side for the first few weeks. Now work on trying to get those knees wider and wider without losing your posture. After a few weeks, progress to five reps and then eventually 10 reps each way going super, super slow. Lastly, for the locked leg ankle cars, stick with three reps at each level and then three full circles each way for each ankle for the first couple of weeks. Slowly start increasing the reps to five and five and then eventually get to 10 and 10 for each leg. Now for even more of my favorite mobility exercise to bulletproof your body, click the link below where you can get my three must-have mobility moves for free. Once you try them, you'll see why they're my all-time favorites. And if you found today's coaching helpful, give me a like or a share so I know what tips you want to see more of. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you're not missing out on all the awesome content we have coming your way. Take it easy, guys. Remember to be strong, be mobile.